Okay, we're out here today. We're finally going to shoot this uh, mini sharps rifle by Kipawa, the Lyman Ideal rifle. Mini, it's a mini sharps in 38.55. We're finally getting out to shoot it. The other day, I did a video where I developed a, a reload for it, cast bullets. Uh, I don't know because uh, I'm only going about 1,100, 1,200 feet per second, and it's shooting low. Low and to the right. So finally, I got out here. I got some ammo. I had a hammer and a drift, and now we're kind of getting to the weird part because uh, 3855, a good factory load, or like for a Winchester 94, a little bit more power, is going to get this bullet up to 1500 feet per second. So we're 400 feet per second low, and we're shooting low. And what I had to do is I had to run this this rear th uh, sight up. I don't know how much more travel I got. I finally, after a few practice rounds, got it on at 50 yards. And this is at 50 yards. Another thing I don't like, the front sight. It was shooting to the right. And if you kind of look at this, I don't know if you can see it. But I had to just about drift that out to where it's out of the dovetail in there. So this sight's way to the right to get on, okay? So I don't know what's going on there. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop off a few more rounds here at 50. I'll go show you what my results are and what's going on. And then we might go out to the hunt. 100 yard, 200 yard. I don't know if this gun will make it with this angle up to 200 yards now. But it is kind of, the other thing is, it is kind of hard to hold this thing. I'm sorry. With the light size, it's not a man size sharp, so I'm used to the bigger sharps. And it is kind of tough to get it steady and hold it. But. And that hair trigger, you know, there's one time I was trying to line it up, took a second, change the shift a little, and touch the trigger. So you got to be careful with them uh, set triggers on these guns. Try to get three more down there now that I got it close to where I want it. This odd shape too. I can't really get it to set in this rest. Right. But as far as the functioning and that, I haven't had any trouble with that other than I got the sight sitting halfway out of the dovetail in the front to get it on center. Go down, take a look, and I'll show you what we've been doing so far. Okay, 50 yards. My first shot was down here after I took it home and adjusted it. So I tapped the dovetail a little more and kind of got it in. Took that second shot, raised up the rear sight, got it up here, said, God. I raised up the rear sight again and gave it a little bit more of a tap. This might have been the one I moved on. And I had one here, and this is one of the other ones. 
Thought I shot more than that, I don't know. But we're on the we're on the bull at 50 yards. So that's it. So I think I'm gonna take it out and try it at a hundred and see what I get. Okay, I took my time, cleared the target, banged two more in at 50 yards. So I just double checked, tried to get as steady as a position that I could, so the gun's on. But like I showed you, that sight's way off in the front dovetail and everything, but now we're going to move on to the 100 and see what we could do. Okay, so far after the sighting, the 50 yards, we've gone through about 30 rounds, no mechanical failures, and 100 yards took a while to get sighted in. The rear sight is two symbols and a little rubber. Gun kind of getting the pressure right setting it out of full with it but I got it I'm using the uh, smallest peep sight aperture in the front sight and using a very small bolt so it's it's tricky but it's just now a matter of practice getting used to the gun mechanically there's no problems with the weapon whatsoever so, quality-wise, the only thing is, the front sight has to be drifted pretty far to the right, so something isn't quite right all together.
got four of them right there together. Put it right dead on the zero and move your crosshair over to where you're hitting. Yeah, you went the wrong way or something. For a minute there, I thought the firing pin broke, but I guess not. Let's see. Okay, here we are at 100 yards. Now when we started off, first shot was down here low. So then I got, I think this one and this one here. Kind of got it in there, but I wasn't, wasn't quite hitting right. So I moved the rear sight up, and then I, I was missing all together. This one came in from somewhere, I have no idea where. It looks like it hit sideways, I had one tumble. Um, so I put up more high vis targets, changed the aperture in the front, and started off hitting here and here. Then when I readjusted the rear sight, I got kind of lost. So again, I was searching, and then finally I got to where about halfway through the box of 50, I started getting them in the bowl going to the right. I think the right is more me pulling somehow because I can keep them right on center and then get in the bowl. So I said, great, let me try this other target. So I went over here and put three of them right there, right in a strand. So then I went, tried adjusting my sight picture, the way I'm holding the gun, I start hitting the black. Then I settled in, thought I had it when I got these and then ended up shooting this group here. There's two, two, then down in here low. So I don't know if it's the bullet, powder charge, then I started getting light strikes. So either the firing pin broke or something, that kind of threw me off. And then finally the last few 
rounds I had to expend the box. I got them here and then one here and that. And uh, so actually not too bad. It's more just practicing with the gun. That's about what it's grouping with those lead bullets. Um, I, I'm not quite sure and I believe I have to go home and disassemble the weapon. I believe the firing pin may be broken in that. Because I was getting too many light strikes there after say 30 rounds. 30. So it'll be 30, be 60. After 60 rounds I started getting the light strikes. But the gun at 100 yards is, uh, that's my first shot, just with unique, no black powder, nothing. Not too bad of a grouping, so probably with a little work to practice, work on the reloads, we can do better. Alright, my final conclusion on the Sharps uh, rifle. As you can see, we had to offset. I got the breech bolt out, so don't panic. We had to offset that front sight a hell of a lot. I checked the tank sight, there's really no play in the back. So I don't know what the story is there, but 1,500 yards, one time knocked that thing out almost out of the, the way, it's on center, windage wise. Unless there's a way to adjust the rear tank sight, I'll check but uh, I don't see a windage knob on it. Now we had some light strikes. Towards the end there you'll see where I'm, the gun's failing to go off. <coughs> Towards the very end, like after 60 rounds, I put 80 rounds through it. About 60 rounds the gun starts, I'm like getting light strikes on there. So I figured, I don't know, the firing pin broke or whatever. So when I get it, got the gun home, I took the block out. And what I noticed with it is where the hammer strikes here, strikes the block here, and then you see the little firing pin on the face will come out. Okay, I thought maybe that somebody said the firing pin's broke. Well, it's not. What, what there is is there's this, uh, this piece of metal here slides out. It's it's like cut in at a dovetail. And then this part that the hammer hits, there's like a arm that goes and it's just a little tiny firing pin with a spring on it. I pulled this all apart, cleaned everything out with hoppies, and lubricated it well. And now, because when I took it out and was pressing on it, I noticed it was sticking. It was gummed up or had something in there, or gunk or something. Now it's moving pretty freely, but I noticed when I first took it out, this would, this would hang up when I tried to move these parts. So I believe it just needed a cleaning and, and to get, because who knows, I didn't take it apart and clean it, you know, before this. So I took it apart and it looks good. But if you notice, there's wear. There's some wear here on the bluing and that and a few other spots. But the breech block itself didn't crack or fail. And I really hoped that that was just, just gunk and needed to be clean. I can't really give the gun, you know, five stars. Um, I didn't have a lot of problems. Some people had problems where the chamber wasn't cut right, where the, the block there cracked after five rounds. Um, you know, and I had another weird thing to have. I had some bullets. Uh, keyhole on me. Now the rifling in there is really thin, you know, not, it's very shallow. Okay, that's the word, shallow. It's not deep. So I don't know if I had a bullet, cast bullet, it might have been a couple thousand undersize or something, or I was using bullets, they're supposedly 379. I get them to cast a little bit bigger and I run them through uh, 370 sizing die. And if they drop in or are undersized, I didn't use them. But I might have one slip through. So I might either have to get another bullet mold or beagle that mold and get it to make a bullet a few thousandths bigger and maybe go with a 381 diameter, even 382. I don't know. But I'll work on it. It's not a total loss. I'm pretty glad that I paid like. $400 under retail for the gun 
uh, if I paid the full shot of 1400 or something, I, I really wouldn't have been happy. I can see why people don't touch the gun in that. And still, tying up $1,000, the gun should be, you know, the sights in that should be a little bit better than that. I'm not quite sure if that tang is misaligned or something. There might be something I'm missing. I'll have to check. But I'm going to work on it some more. If you can find one at a reasonable price, if you can get a deal on one, go ahead and buy it. I wouldn't recommend buying this one brand new, having to pay full retail. If you can find a used one or something or one that you kind of know works, you can get it for a little bit less. But I really wouldn't recommend buying this, and that's probably why there's no reviews or nothing on this gun. It's something somebody won't touch with a 10 foot pole. Now, the other lineman, the 4570, the full size one, there's 100 videos on that. Of course, that gun's made by Petrosoli. And I'd like to get one of them, which I may, may not. I just might get a Petrosoli, a, a different grade, a hunting grade, or, or maybe used one or something. But that's my review on this gun.